Yo, what's good, everybody, and welcome back to Keep It Techie, where we break down tech, Linux, and digital freedom in a way that actually makes sense. But today's video, it's not about Linux distros or command line tricks. It's about something way bigger, something that affects all of us, whether you're in tech or not. What if I told you the Patriot Act didn't disappear? It just evolved, and now it's powered by AI, backed by billions in government money, and quietly shaping everything from police raids to pandemic policies. I'm talking about Palantir Technologies, a company that started with CIA money and is now deeply embedded in our government. So stick with me because by the end of this video, I promise you'll see why I call this the Patriot Act 2.0. Now make sure you smash that like button to boost this video because this is the kind of information they don't want pushed to the top of the feed. So let's get to it. Palantir Technologies, named after the seeing stone from the Lord of the Rings movie. And it was founded in 2003 after 9-11. And the company was backed by Peter Thiel and the CIA's venture firm in QTEL. Now, their original goal was to help the U.S. government connect the dots to stop terrorist attacks. And that sounds harmless, right? But it didn't stop there. Palantir evolved into the default data brain behind many U.S. intelligence and law enforcement operations. Their core system, Gotham, is used by ICE, DHS, local police, the military, even the CDC at one point. Then you got Foundry, which powers supply chain analytics and crisis response for major corporations and government agencies. Then Apollo, which handles software delivery pipelines. And finally, their AI powered system that lets clients run simulations, query vast data sets, and even automate policy decisions. Let that sink in. Palantir isn't just a contractor. They're aiming to become the operating system of government. And so that means not just helping it, running it. And so that's like real power. I mean, unelected, unregulated, and largely invisible. What's up, y'all? If you've been watching my channel for a minute, you already know I stay talking about Linux. And if you're looking for a solid, reliable enterprise Linux distro, let me put you on to Rocky Linux. This is the go-to replacement for CentOS, and it's built for the community by the community. It's got everything you need for a stable and secure Linux experience, whether you're running servers, home labs, or enterprise workloads. And the best part is backed by CIQ, making sure it stays rock solid for the long haul. So if you're tired of these companies pulling a plug on your favorite distros, Rocky Linux is where you need to be. And I've covered Rocky Linux before, and trust me, it's worth checking out. So head over to rockylinux.org to learn more and get started. Keep it techie. Peace. So let's bring it back to 2013 when Edward Snowden exposed secret NSA programs like Prism, which had direct access to Google, Apple, Facebook server. I believe it was another one called X Keyscore, which had real time internet tracking and Upstream, which was a massive data collection on fiber cables. And that was the Patriot Act fully weaponized. I mean, we were shocked, outraged, even scared. But fast forward here at 2025, and now we have Palantir Gotham, which pulls together even more data from more sources, all under legal government contracts. What Snowden revealed in secret is now being openly implemented by Palantir and pitched as efficiency. I mean, agencies like ICE use it to map social networks of immigrants and their families. Law enforcement uses it to create pre-crime threat models. And what's worse, the algorithms are proprietary. So that means no public oversight, no civilian audit. It's governance by black box. You don't get to see how the decisions are made. You just live with the consequences. Now, I did a lot of research on Palantir while creating this video, and their mission creep is real. After Gotham came success in public health, during COVID, Palantir built the HHS Protect platform which sidelined the CDC and gave Palantir centralized control over pandemic data. And one of their key advisors, Dr. Deborah Briggs, she later admitted she shaped data presentations to influence public compliance. Then you got Will Hurd. He's a former CIA officer turned congressman. 
now on Palantir's advisory board. And then also add in General Perner, who ran Operation Warp Speed's military vaccine rollout. This isn't just tech, it's militarized bureaucracy filtered through Palantir dashboards. Now they're building Immigration OS for ICE, a new $30 million system combining IRS, security, USCIS, and DHS data into one platform. So when an immigrant applies for a visa, pays taxes, or visits a hospital, that data could automatically flow into a predictive model to flag them. And to me, that's super terrifying. And make no mistake, these systems always get tested on marginalized communities first, but the end game is all of us. Now, let me keep it real. I wasn't always that concerned about my privacy when it came to the internet and all that stuff. But when the Snowden leaks dropped, you know, all those NSA documents that were put out there, it had me say, man, they're watching everything. This is crazy. So that forced me to kind of go a little deeper into Linux, self-hosting, encryption, and all of that. And it's not because I was doing anything wrong, but because I realized compliance doesn't equal safety. And so we've got to be proactive because if you wait until they're knocking at your door, it's already too late. Now get this, in the European Union, Palantir has been banned from public tenders. Countries like France and Germany said no thanks to their surveillance tech. And under GDPR, data collection has real limits. You can't just mash together medical, financial, and behavior data into a centralized system. But here in the U.S., Palantir is practically writing the playbook with no privacy laws at the federal level. So while the EU builds firewalls around personal data, we're over here giving companies the keys to the kingdom, which is crazy. So what can you do about all this? Here's how you can fight back and take your privacy a little bit more seriously. It's not too much you could do, but you can switch to Linux, which is something I talk about on this channel all the time. So whether it's Tails or something like, check out one of those Linux distros that may be an alternative to Windows. That way you not be sending all the telemetry data. And also you don't have to get on one of those major Linux distros you could try or something like that. I think Ubuntu does ask you to send telemetry data, but you could turn that off. You could turn off location and all that stuff. You can also switch out your browser. You could try Brave. That's one of the ones I recommend. Firefox. I know it's a lot of issues with Firefox right now. People are a little upset with Firefox for whatever reason, not 100% sure, but you can check them out. They had a uBlock Origin, Privacy Badger, and all that other stuff. But Brave Browser is what I recommend. The one I'm currently using right now is Vivaldi. I like that one as well. It's a privacy browser as well. It's based on Chrome. Now, another thing you can do is encrypt your messages. Use Signal for everything. That's one cool thing. Get off of those social media apps. Try to encrypt things yourself using a separate application. Now, one other thing you can do is ditch Google Drive. And that's why I recommend people to set up their own home NAS. That way your stuff is not, you know, shared out on some cloud platform because these companies can allow people to get access or the government to get access to your cloud platform. They say they're not supposed to, but I'm sure these government agencies can get access to your cloud stuff, especially if they supply a warrant or if they need to, you know, get into it. And I know that normal response, if you have nothing to hide or whatever, and I get that. I mean, yeah, I understand that. But still, I mean, you should value your privacy. I wouldn't want a company to know everything about me. You know what I'm saying? So you want to protect some of what you can at least. Now, also another tip is to decentralize wherever you can so there are chats out there like matrix i believe i talked about this in my last video that's something that germany is going to as far as like a chat they're replacing teams with that mastodon there's also a couple other chats out there you can set up like mattermost i know that's one that's free and open source you can set that up it's kind of like discord you can chat with friends on there um also learn the tour network uh, learn how to use Tor, the Tor browser, also VPNs, and stop giving apps on your phone unnecessary permissions. That's one of the biggest things, you know what I'm saying? Make tracking you and hoard as possible. Now, Palantir wants to be the invisible staffer in every agency, every crisis room, every simulation, 
they don't want to overthrow democracy. They want to run it through suggestions. And if you don't want AI deciding who gets arrested, denied services, or flagged for threats, it's time to speak up because what starts in ice raids or war zones always comes home. Now, quick question. Have you heard of Palantir before this? And what's your take on predictive policing and AI surveillance? I love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. And if this video hits hard, please like it, share it with someone who needs to hear it, and subscribe to Keep It Techie for more Linux privacy and truth telling in tech. Until next time, stay sharp, stay free, and as always, keep it techie. Peace. Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech. Wow. <laughs>